It's interlinking family, academia, and industry. I'll start with family. I'll actually start with a small story. I knew of a domestic help. His name was Ali Akbar. He was responsible for regular house chores, doing the bazaar, doing the other stuff for the house. And then he was also responsible to take care of the youngest in the family. The child was only one year old, and um, he stayed with the child for a very long time, if I'm not mistaken, till 10 or 12 years, till the child was 10 or 12 years old. One thing that Ali Akbar used to do to the child, besides taking care of him, which he did a lot, was to him and to everyone around him, he used to always tell him that, you will be somebody someday. You will be the president. He didn't mean Rashtraputi, he meant president. You will be a president someday. Moving on. I'll come back to this at the end of the story, at the end of the presentation. Family. Families pay, play the most important role in children's education. So much that we foresee or we aspire what we want it to be in our children. All the things that we want it to be, becoming Bill Gates, you know, we want our children to become the next Bill Gates. We aspire a lot of things from our children. We have high expectations. So much that we actually give up a lot of our own time, our family time, and we work so hard just to provide better for our children. What, me, what we miss out in the process is that quality time that we need to spend with our family, with our children. That quality time that we need to spend with our children to listen to them what they expect and what they want to be. Things need to change. So that was, uh, you know, what I was saying that is that uh, we as parents, not only a father, but also a, a, as parents, father and mother, uh, and also grandparents, we spend so much time working that we forget what our children wants and needs are, what they want to aspire to be. That needs to change. We need to start listening to our children and focus more on what their interests are and where to develop and where to nurture their expertise and knowledge. Why? Because we now live in an era of disruption, an era of Mr. Kader, of Captain Courage, Mashrafi, Shakib al Hassan, Korvi, Wasfia all from very different aspects of the industry, right? Somebody's working with humanity, somebody's working with alternative education, sports, and of course, you know, everybody knows Bcash. If we do not change ourselves as parents, then we will not be able to develop and generate the next Kader among our children. We must learn to unlearn. Because we have already learned with a certain set of knowledge and expectations in our mind, we need to change that. And in order to change that, first we need to unlearn. And then rewire ourselves to relearn for the future. I already see a pattern in change among our generation of parents. I find myself, my friends and family wanting to spend a lot more time with their families, with their children, 
we want to spend you know those quality time that our parents couldn't give us because they were working so hard we are now in a phase that we would rather work a little less and spend a little more time with our children unfortunately can you guys see the image one thing that's you know setting us apart even though we are with our family and with our children the digital divide keeps us apart we are always on our mobile devices or some kind of a personal device how do you think your child would feel when he or she is saying something to you and you're actually with him physically but mentally you're not there spiritually you're not there with the child you're actually not listening to him you may be answering hmm yes yeah, so what what else did you do but that really does not make the child feel wanted or special while we are with them we need to be with them we need to start practicing keeping our devices away for that certain amount of time we need to we need to schedule ourselves that when i'm with my child with my wife with my mom with my father i need to give them that quality 5 minutes on undivided attention listen to them you know one thing that uh, we miss out as families we don't miss out but we need to emphasize it a lot more is developing human good human qualities in our children it's expected from academia that these things would be taught by the families at home why not in academia why not in institutions why is this not part of our curricula but more so children learn from us as parents as brothers as sisters as grandparents how we behave and how we act with our parents with our friends with our family with our suppliers with our buyers is what our children will learn from us the good virtues of being a good human being moving on to industry well industry and academia go hand in hand there's always this disparity among young graduates versus industry that there's a big mismatch there's a gap and hence we are talking about you know the bridging today there's a mismatch and it is true that there is a mismatch there is a mismatch in what we are being taught in schools and colleges in general and what is actually needed in the industry and because i am a, a business graduate i'll talk from business uh, perspective i'm from what i've heard today is that this particular institute is already working on a lot of hands on um, technology driven uh, education but when it comes to businesses i'll give you an, a small example is that we teach students business studies but we do not teach them business processes we do not educate them enough to actually become that business leader because end of the day i might be giving a vision to my company but who's actually the business person it's either he or she who's actually talking to my clients or to my stakeholders people who are leading those particular processes they are the business person not me not us we are entrepreneurs we give you the vision we want you to achieve it how you achieve it is best upon you so going back to the mismatch have you ever thought of why you know we do studies the way that we do 
And I'll ask that to uh, my friends uh, in the faculty as well. Because the way that we've been studying or the way the education system is established, it's a very linear process, right? It's a very sequential. You do this, next you do this, next you do that. It's either right or it's wrong. It's either one plus one equals to two or it's not. Growing up, my father ensured that we started working from a very young age. I actually joined the company doing small chores since grade six. So by the time I actually completed my A-levels, I already had six years of experience in my own company. So I had already seen how business processes work, how management processes work, how marketing processes work. And of course, you know, that got stored in my memory. When I went for my education, my higher education in the US, and I was going through all these textbooks, I could not agree with a lot of times with what the books had to say. And I would, you know, argue with my teachers. And a lot of times, I did not make sense to them, and they did not make sense to me. And I was always proven that I was wrong, but not mistaken. There's a difference between mistaken versus wrong. To the teachers or to the, to the faculty, it's what the book says is either right or it's wrong. We need to change that because there, when it comes to mathematics, when it comes to science, yes, it's linear. It's one plus one equals to two. E equals to mc square. But when it comes to analytics, it's what I perceive of it. It's what you perceive of it as a student. You can have different views, and that needs to be encouraged. And that's why I, um, you know, I highly recommend that people start uh, internships at a very young age. Going back to industry, I'm sure that a lot of people from the industry and academy would uh, agree with me that still now, not only local companies, but also MNCs in Bangladesh have the same statistics that 70% is on the job training. If 70% is on the job training, then what are we doing in these universities? Why are we wasting four years plus two years in an institute? You know why? Because we are not being taught what's required on the job, in school, when we are supposed to be. And you know what happens then? It creates dissatisfaction among industry, and it creates dissatisfaction among the graduates. Because when they graduate, they have this high expectation of themselves, they aspire to be the best, oh, I graduated with a 4.0, but when I, when I went to join the company, or when I started working in a company, I was being told that I do not have those prerequisites. And you know why? That's why so many institutes have developed to provide these short courses. How to open a letter of credit how to talk to a customer, what are your business etiquettes, simple things that is not being taught in the academia today. And this is why we have to end up spending a lot of time and effort and money in training the students and graduates. I'll move faster. I would recommend that academia adapt to internship in all years of graduation. If it's a bachelor program, I personally would recommend that every year students should go through internships. And research is for researchers. If you're a master's program, uh, if you're in master's 
or doing an MBA, you should not be even allowed to do a research. Even if you do, then you should be doing it as an optional course. It should be mandate to do an internship. So what should schools look like for the future? Like I was saying earlier, we need to change ourselves. We need to adapt to what's there in the future. And I think we have already spoken a lot about artificial intelligence, uh, you know, what's happening, what's coming, and how do we prepare ourselves for that. I'll end with a short uh, story again. My child who's now, my elder son who's 14 years old, uh, started playing Minecraft when he was 9 or 10 and he got really good at it. So good that he started even programming on Minecraft. And so much so that he started vlogging. He had his own channel on YouTube providing Minecraft tutorials for children. He was already showing his entrepreneurial skills because he was earning credits on YouTube vlogging and he was only 10 years old. My sons, both my sons are also very much into sports. Just like myself, very inspired by uh, soccer and especially for them their uh, inspiration is Cristiano Ronaldo and they, so much again that they actually want to be, they want to play professional soccer, they want to play professional football. I assisted them as much as I could, and they, guess what? They are now 13 and 14, and they play the local leagues, junior local leagues in Canada now. And they want to join, hopefully in a, in a big club someday. And I am only trying to provide what I can from my side. Uh, once again, uh, Going back to the story which I started with, that young kid was myself. Not my parents, not my family, not my siblings believed that I could achieve something. But something in that domestic help, Mr. Ali Akbar saw something in me that he kept on inspiring me and motivating me that I could be somebody someday. Thank you.